I'm delighted to welcome today the very delightful Heather Crow from Kaluna Graphics. So welcome, Heather. Hello. So um, Kaluna Graphics, um, you can see uh, behind you on the uh, on the wall, you've got a very nice bag there, but that's not what you started off doing, is it? Making bags. That's a, that's a new venture for you. It is, yes. Yeah, I, um, I normally design and build exhibition stands. <laughs> So, um, so how did you get to do, I mean, it's not exactly the sort of thing that you would uh, normally expect to be doing when you leave school. So how did you get from, um, from well, when you left school, what did you, did you, did, do you want to do anything special? Did you have your, your, your heart set on something? Um, no, I was one of those people that when I left school, I had absolutely no idea what earth I wanted to do. I was very good at maths and very good at science, um, but enjoyed art. So it was a strange mix of talents, I guess. Um, and I went to uni um, briefly, I didn't finish my course. Um, and so I kind of, I landed into quantity surveying of all things, um, just because I was very good at maths. Um, and so I did that for a few years and decided actually that wasn't creative enough for me. Um, and so ended up working in opticians for a good number of years as well. Um, and then I found this job come up locally to me, um, wanting an exhibition designer. And it just really appealed to me because it meant that I could do the mathsy side because you have to be good at technical drawing and things like that. Um, but also you get to design the graphics and things. Um, so yeah, I ended up just applying for the role knowing that I was supremely underqualified for it and managed to get it somehow and it just kind of went from there really that was about six years ago I mean, probably longer <laughs> so so you were working for somebody else at this time yes so, so, the Kaluna yeah. graphics is that what what your name is now or the yeah. right yeah so talk, talk us through how you how, how you've made that transition so I initially trained at a company local to me and worked there for a couple of years. Um, and then I actually started technically this company in another company about four years ago um, so that I would have the stability of a, a, a stable income as such. Um, so, but I was working for another company. Um, but the, yeah, about, well, it was August last year, I decided actually, I want to do this for myself. I'm doing so many hours and I was putting my heart and soul into it. And so I wanted to have the benefits of it being my company and have a lot more say over all the, the quality of the products and things like that. So um, yeah, I decided to start up for myself and created Kaluna Graphics. And where did the name come from? Uh, well, Kaluna is uh, actually the Latin for Heather. Okay. Ah. <laughs> and the listeners won't be able to um, to see this. Visu well, maybe you can visualise it. But the way you've got the graphics with the X through the butterflies is brilliant. Very creative. Yes. Obviously, yeah. with YouTube listeners, uh, YouTube with YouTube watchers can see it, but uh, radio listeners can't see it. But um, yeah. so Heather graphics basically. Basically, yes. <laughs> so, last August, um, who would have who would have known? You know, last August compared to this August, whoever would have predicted? You know what, oh, what happened? I know, yeah, and it's such it's heartbreaking almost because when you do something that you really really love, because obviously I've gone through that process of having these three very very different career paths, um, and then when you land in something that you really really love. And then you're told, come March, you, you're not allowed to do that anymore. You can't do it because, you know, large scale exhibitions aren't allowed. It is heartbreaking. It's um, very, very difficult to then try and like land on your feet and find something else to do in the meantime. So you had already left the company. Is, 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 did the company continue trading? Are they still there? Yes, yeah, so um, they carried on, um, oh, well, actually they replaced me with three people, so I was clearly oh. working. <laughs> yes, weren't you just? 
Um, yes, so uh, yeah, they uh, they continue, but I believe they they all went on a furlough as soon as this started. Unfortunately, because um, I was I'm a sole trader, um, and because I'm a new business as well, I've not had any of that government help, unfortunately. Yeah. But they have to draw a line somewhere, so I understand. So tell us what you're doing now, because the bag um, wasn't just ordinary fabric, was it? No, so I, that was one thing that I definitely wanted to do when I started my company. I'm very much on board with sustainability, environmental sustainability. I just, I can't stand how wasteful the exhibition industry is. It's horrendous, like stands are built for a two day show. And then at the end of them, like you'll have three halls at the NEC in Birmingham and these vast skips and everything's just getting thrown into them. It's, it's awful. And so I knew when I started Kaluna Graphics, I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to minimize my impact on the environment as much as physically possible. And so I don't send anything to landfill. I just, it goes against my ethos. I just couldn't do it. So whenever someone didn't want to reuse their graphic, instead of throwing it away, I was just, like putting it to one side, because at the end of the day, it's fabric. So why would I throw that away? <laughs> um, but I love sewing. It's something that I've always done. I like making Christmas presents and things like that on the sewing machine. I always have. And so I then, when lockdown happened, I've got this big stack of old graphics that I was like, well, I'll just make that into useful stuff and then I can sell it and make a bit of money for a local charity. So it was kind of a bit of a win-win. <laughs> so, um, so we can see the bag, which looks fabulous. What, what else have you made? Um, so I've made handbags and boxes and pencil cases. Um, I've been doing some uh, stockings, weirdly enough, because it's Christmas time. So uh, oh, fabulous. <laughs> oh dear. How did you do that? But you never know what you're going to end up with because if you've got if, if you imagine an exhibition stand can be like eight 12 meters long and so even if you've got a picture of i don't know liverpool or something like that stretching over this huge expanse of fabric if you're making something that's this big you'll probably only end up with a bit of a building on it <laughs> and it's not until you start cutting it up that you start seeing what you're going to be making because again i don't like wasting stuff so i won't unnecessarily cut for a certain patch <laughs> so, yeah it's always quite fun to like get on the sewing machine and find out what it's going to look like it's yeah it's good yeah I think it's it's extremely clever what you've what you what you're doing so where do you store all this stuff I mean does it fold up small all this fabric I mean imagine some of them as you said you know could be quite large do you have a store yeah. somewhere um, well, it's um, our loft room, essentially. It's, it's where we also air our clothes and things like that. So it's kind of the dumping ground, uh, this massive pile of fabric. And then when they get made into things, I've got these boxes all over the place of various things. So, uh, yes, it's uh, all stored ready for anyone who wants to buy them. And have you got a, an online store where you're selling them? Yes, yeah. I started up a new page on my website and I approached um, the Seven Hospice, so that's um, a charity local to me, um, just to say, look, I'm planning on doing this and I'd like to um, give you some of the money too. Um, so I then set up an agreement with them so I can give 25% goes over to them. Brilliant, excellent. So do you have any ideas in mind of a kind of a range of things you're going to do or do you just literally make it up as you go along? Um, I tend to just make it up because I don't follow patterns and I never have. I tend to make up what I want to make. And so I did a, a couple of trials for a, um, a running pouch, because mainly because I wanted one myself. <laughs> um, and I just couldn't get the shape quite right. So that one never got past kind of the prototype stage. Um, but then when it comes to handbags and things, I'm always kind of improving what it looks like and what it kind of has internally and things like that. Because um, I think that's half of the fun of, is the design process before I then start making five or ten of them to put on the website. Well, 
So how practical is this to, to do as a, a replacement business? Is it something that you can see picking up further or has it already replaced what you were doing? I've not replaced it by any means, no. Um, I can imagine though that it's going forward, it probably could. Um, it's something because there are so many different industries out there who have waste fabric. Because um, although once exhibitions do start up again, that will be where my main business comes from. And therefore there will be waste graphics from there. But until those come back, I will run out of fabric. So <laughs> there's places like curtain manufacturers, um, sofa manufacturers, places like that who are constantly have fabric waste that I can approach to then say, look, would you like me to upcycle for you? So uh, yes, I will uh, be going down that route. <laughs> Brilliant, and you can make bigger items as well, couldn't you? Not just the smaller items. There's no, no end really to the possibilities. Exactly, and especially with the, the exhibition fabric, it's very hard wearing. Um, and because um, the fabric that I print onto, it's an eco-friendly fabric anyway, um, so it can be machine washed over and over and over and over, and it will still look as good as new. It's brilliant stuff. Um, so I tend to try and make more hard wearing things with my fabrics. Um, whereas if I were to start getting into, I don't know, the, the fabric um, from clothing manufacturers or someone like that, then chances are it would be restricted then as to what I can make out of that stuff because, yeah, it might not be quite as hard wearing. Cool. And, and where do people get hold of these wonderful creations, Heather? <laughs> if they go on my website, it's uh, www.kalunagraphics.co.uk and then just go to the shop tab on there and then they are literally all on there. Okay, for the benefit of the, the, the listeners, would you spell um, Kaluna Graphics? Of course, <laughs> yes, because it's unusual. Yeah, so it is C-A-L-L-U-N-A G-R-A-P-H-I-X. Kaluna.co.uk. Fantastic. So Heather yeah. Crow, thank you so much for spending time today. And I take my hat off to you. It's really wonderful to see the uh, the, the creativity that you've embraced this uh, the situation that we're in. And uh, I can see that you will be doing this actually in the in a bigger scale before too long. So I wish you the best. Thank you. <laughs>